Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to talk about the best beginner telescopes. The best beginner telescope may actually not be a telescope if your price range is really, really low. If you've only got a few dollars to spend, get a pair of binoculars. Now, I've got a whole video about selecting uh, beginner binoculars for as low as about 25, 30 bucks. You will get a little bit more when you spend more, but uh, it's not a bad way to start. A lot of amateurs start with binoculars and it's not a bad thing to have around the house anyway. So this is a good investment. Now in terms of telescopes, the lowest cost one that I recommend is this one. This is a little Newtoni. It's a 50 millimeter Newtonian reflector. And it's basically, it's more or less a toy. It's, it's kind of aimed at kids. It comes apart and you can look at the inside. It's got some good educational value. I've got a whole review on that also. Um, and it's not bad. It's about $50. The optics are not great. Uh, don't expect great optics in that price range, but it's not bad. Uh, for a few dollars more, you can get this one here. This is, uh, they're commonplace. These are 76 millimeter Newtonian reflectors. This happens to be the one by Celestron, uh, but they're all, they're a whole bunch of very, very similar telescopes. They are uh, also optically not great. Uh, they have what's called spherical optics instead of parabolic optics. The mirror has a spherical shape instead of a parabola. A parabola has a much sharper image. Maybe not a bad buy for a kid. Uh, I certainly would recommend it as my first telescope for a beginner with any kind of budget. Instead, this would be a better buy for you. You can get this one. This You're going up over $100 now. so. Um, this is the Zumel or Zumel Z100, and Orion has a similar scope uh, with a different name. It has a parabolic mirror. Now that's, uh, as I just said, a big deal. The parabolic mirror, it has a finder, it comes with a couple of decent eyepieces. Uh, so it's a pretty good scope. It has the disadvantage in that you cannot adjust it, which actually may be an advantage because a lot of beginners probably wouldn't want anything to do with adjusting a telescope. Um, they wouldn't know what to do with the knobs and dials and so forth. Uh, so this one is not adjustable, which might be good for a beginner in that price range. Uh, but it's a disadvantage because you can't tweak it in for a really nice optical performance. Although the only one I've ever had is this one and it has good optics right on the box. The uh, adjustment was just right. So uh, not a bad buy for you. A little over 100, maybe 120, 130, 150 dollars. Uh, the next one goes quite a ways higher in price. This is uh, the Orion Starburst Telescope, highly regarded by everyone who knows anything about beginner telescopes. This one has about a four and a half inch aperture, which is pretty decent aperture. It has a parabolic mirror. That's a really big deal. It's adjustable. It's collimation screws. As a matter of fact, it comes with a collimating eyepiece. Very useful. Uh, the beginner might find that a little intimidating, but once you get used to it, adjusting and collimating a Newtonian telescope like this is not too bad. It's really not that challenging at all. It just takes a little getting used to. Uh, and this one gives you really good performance, a lot of bang for the buck with a, a Newtonian in this aperture at about 250 bucks. Uh, a little bit bigger in terms of aperture and a little bit therefore better in terms of performance is this one. This is the Astronomers Without Borders. It's about the same price. I mean, these are comparable price. There are a couple of differences. Obviously, what the heck is all this stuff here? This is a folding telescope. That is, it slides together like that, makes it more portable, but also makes it a little bit more tricky for the beginner. It's got an exposed secondary mirror, which is a downside. Uh, a little, uh, the helical focuser is not quite as good, but on the whole, you get as good or better telescope here as there. Uh, and you do have to collimate this one. It's got a collimating eyepiece like the other one. This is a very highly regarded telescope also, and especially since you can sometimes buy this for less money than the Starburst. And it's more telescope for less money, so, that's a, that's a pretty good deal. So that's used to be my premium, absolute best, 
highly recommended beginner telescope, right around the $250 price range. And I still would recommend it in that price range. If you've got a few extra bucks, I highly recommend, I just cannot emphasize how much I'd recommend this guy. This is new technology. This is a, first of all, it's a refractor. So it's different from these guys. Go, wait a minute, why the difference? Generally, you get more bang for the buck with a Newtonian reflector. But this one is a four inch refractor. So it's got pretty good aperture. That opening on the front is, uh, and it'll perform just almost as well as one of these in terms of the uh, sharpness and crispness of the image. So it's very, very good performance. Not ideal, but, but very, very good. So this is good performance. Um, the mount is okay, <laughs> not great, okay. The main thing this has is right here. That's a port for your smartphone. If you have a, a smartphone, which everyone does these days, download the app and this thing will find things for you. It doesn't drive the telescope there, but the smartphone will tell you where to point the telescope. Now, this is such a big deal for a beginner. Beginners struggle and struggle with how do I find this and how do I find that? And it's something that I struggled with when I was starting out. It's really, really challenging. It's a major hurdle to overcome. It's something that you'll have to overcome with any of these other scopes is how do you find the cool stuff up in the sky? This one will do it for you. Uh, it's got some little wrinkles to it that in a way uh, is a sort of a downside because it takes away some of the challenge but by the same token, it makes things much more gratifying very, very quickly. So you can get a, a very, very nice, almost instantaneous reward with one of these scopes. I've got a whole review on this thing, so be sure to, to watch that if you're interested in this. By the way, the StarSense also comes in a couple of cheaper, cheaper versions. There's one that's 114 millimeters, toxic. Stay away from it. It's about the same price as these. Don't buy it. Do not buy it. It's a horrible, horrible optical system. Terrible. There's also an 80 millimeter. Uh, looks almost identical to this, but it, it has a bad mount. It's just terrible, and the aperture is smaller. So don't buy those two guys. If you're going to get a star sense, get this one, or go on up to the bigger one. Get a nice big eight inch if you can afford it. Um, probably nine hundred thousand dollars, something like that. So um, this is what I would recommend for the beginner now, if you can possibly squeeze out the money to afford it. This is going to be a much better buy. I hope this little guide, my tour guide of beginner uh, telescopes for amateur astronomers has been helpful to you. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.